Rev up your engine! Okay, today I'm going to get tips on how to make your car last as long as it possibly can before you have to buy another one. Tricks that I've known that work and some that not only do they not work, but they can destroy your car, so you don't want to try them. Now let's say your power steering fluid's leaking all over the place. You find out you need an expensive rack, it's going to cost you over a thousand dollars. Well, you can use power steering leaks, sometimes it can help, but you can't always use that leak. Let's say you got a Ford, a Chrysler, perfectly fine putting that power steering leak in the power steering system. But let's say you got a Honda, never ever use that stuff in a Honda power steering system. Hondas have very delicate power steering systems, only use the Honda fluid. That's why when you go to auto parts stores, you'll often see special bottles that say Honda power steering fluid. Only use that. Don't add any kind of sealer, it'll mess it up. And the same thing goes for transmission fix. It says it stops shuddering and slipping. Now it can. This stuff is really thick. Check it out. It's like molasses. Look how slow it flows. It's very thick stuff. Look at it. Now, if you have an old Ford, old Chevy, old Chrysler, if you take a quart of the fluid out of an old transmission, replace it with a quart of that thick stuff, it can actually help it. I've seen it in GM products. They would barely shift. Some guys would take two quarts of fluid out, put two bottles of Lucas, and within a few days, they'd be shifting pretty good. But don't ever, ever, Use it in a Honda. The Honda automatic transmissions are just like their power steering systems. You want to stick only to the Honda original fluid. You don't want to use anything else. Now I am talking about trying to keep an old clunker going a little bit longer. So that's why I'm saying you could drain out a quart in a Ford or a Chevy or Chrysler. Put a quart of that stuff in and pray it helps. Really old cars high mileage. It's not a good idea to take all the fluid out because if you do, and put in new fluid, they often start to slip. It is a good idea, you could drop the pan, change the filter, that's important. But then put in the old fluid, minus one quart, and add a quart of the Lucas. You don't want to change the whole fluid in an old car with really high mileage, because if you do, often they won't even move, they'll slip so bad. Now the main thing in an old Honda like this is, just change the transmission fluid I do it every 30, 40,000 miles, because all it has is a little drain plug, you drain it out, then there's a fill plug, you pour it in, and that's it. It's a very simple thing to do. Use the Honda fluid, last as long as it possibly can. But if you've been bad, say you got 200 something thousand miles and you've never touched the fluid in a Honda, believe me, leave it alone. Just live with whatever it's doing, because if you do change the fluid, after all those years, 250,000 miles, Odds are it'll start slipping if you put fluid in it. So if it's going okay and it hasn't been changed, leave it alone. If you're up on your maintenance and you change it every 30, 40,000 miles, just keep doing that. But if you haven't, my advice is leave that alone. Don't mess with something that's working with that kind of mileage because it might go out. And if you own an old car with a CVT, they've been out a long time now. Some have been off for much longer than a decade. Only use CVT fluid. Do not try any other type of fluid. They're very different transmissions. And the older ones often don't feel right anyways. They didn't really design them perfectly, so they're kind of sloppy. They're kind of like you're sloshing on when you're driving down a road, like an old motorboat engine. You don't want to mess with the other kinds of fluid. They're made for one type of fluid. Only use CVT fluid. And if you do own one you've been maintaining, it definitely changes the fluid every 30,000 miles. Fluid's cheap. Those CVT transmissions cost thousands to fix when they break. You want to maintain them as well as possible. And if you have an old one, make sure you only use CVT fluid. But same as all the others, you got 200 something thousand miles on it, leave it alone if you haven't changed it before. Do it regularly, but if you haven't all those mileage, leave it alone, because you change it, then you may have a car that won't even move under its own power. Now here I'm going to dispel an old myth. A lot of guys, as their cars wear and get really old, they start burning oil, and they put a heavier oil. Let's say your car was made for zero W20 oil. They'll say, I'll put a thicker one in, like a 5W30 oil. Ah, don't do that in a modern car. Back in the day when I was a young mechanic in the 1960s, that was okay. In those days, vehicles had cast iron engines. You could put all kinds of heavier oil. They were made for heavier oil. But take a modern car that was made for zero W20 and some of them zero W16 oils. You want to stick with the light oil because they were designed for this. 
take this Honda. It's 13 years old. But as you can see here, even it was made for 5W20 oil. If you want to remember one thing I'm talking about today, that is your engine has the most wear upon dry stardom. When you start the car, the oil pump has to pump oil to the top of the engine, to the camshaft and the valves. Camshaft's dry, it's got to pump up. You want it to pump up as fast as it can because you do not want metal to metal contact for long. With the Zero W20 oil, it flows faster, especially when it's cold outside. But even when it's hot outside, it flows better. It flows better, you get lubrication and less wear. 90 something percent of your wear is on dry startup. So you want to make sure you use the right oil. Not one that's heavier because it's burning some oil. You stick in a heavier weight oil, yeah. You might burn a little bit less, but it's going to wear the cams and the bearings out faster. Oil's relatively cheap. You can keep adding oil. When the cam goes out, you got to rebuild the engine. If you got an old clunker, you're not going to spend that kind of money, thousands rebuilding it. So it's good by car. So it's better to keep the original oil. If it does burn, add it. Keep a jug in your trunk. They got those five quart jugs now, screw tops. Use some of it, put it back, then you got plenty of oil for when it burns the oil. Do not put a heavy oil in it. And the same goes for the Lucas engine oil. It's thick too, the additive. Do not put it in a modern car. Now they do make a lighter version. It's not thick. That's a lighter version Lucas oil, the thin Lucas additive. And that's okay to put in a modern car if it's got a ton of miles and it's using more oil. Now the best thing of course is to change your oil and filter regularly to not have a problem in the first place. And if you have a modern car with gasoline direct injection, the GDI or turbochargers, use that new GF-6 oil. That oil was designed just for those engines. It costs a little bit more, but the prices are coming down because it's new and now there's some competition. The GF-6 oil is made so it burns less oil, so it lubricates the bearings better and especially lubricates the timing chain. Modern cars have all gone back to timing chains because they have variable valve timing. Some of them have two or three different timing chains. They're very complex engines. You don't want the chain to go out. You use that new GF6 oil, and they even have one of them that's backwards compatible for other cars that are heavier than 016. Use that. It's an excellent oil. You pay a little bit more, but it's a higher quality oil. Do not think heavier is better. It is not. It has to flow correctly. It will not run correctly. You'll get worse gas mileage. Stick to what that says on the car or use the backwards compatible GF6 oil that has the same viscosity. You always want to keep the same viscosity that says on the top of the engine. As you can see, it's not rocket science. There it is. You can't miss it. And if you do want your old clunker to last longer, don't think it's an old car. I'm not going to waste my time changing the oil. It's actually more important to change the oil in an older car. It gets dirtier faster. Things wear out faster. You'll get more micro metal fragments inside from the engine wearing. So you might even push your oil changes up. You might change it every 3,000 miles instead of every five. Do not have an old worn out car and think you can change the oil every 10 to 12,000 miles. It will wear out even faster. Oil is cheap, engines aren't. Always keep that in mind. Now the next thing you can do to make your old car last forever is keep a really good fire extinguisher handy in the vehicle. And this particular one has Halitron in it. The stuff is amazing for putting out fires that cars are gonna have. Electrical fires, gasoline fires, oil fires. The stuff's amazing, it smothers the fires. Realize you're driving an old car. Okay, you got a brand new car, you're not really thinking about fire, but you got an old clunker. What if a fuel line or something leaks, starts a little fire? You don't have a fire extinguisher, goodbye car, it'll burn down to the ground. You got a tiny little fire, whoosh, you can put it out. Plus, it could save your life or somebody else's life. You see something on the highway, whip it out and hose it down. Now, this is a very expensive fire extinguisher. It's very expensive to refill too, but if you put out a fire, believe me, the fire departments, they'll refill this thing free for you. You save somebody's life and stop something, they fill them up for nothing if you're a good Samaritan like that. This H&R Performance, all metal. You buy this thing once, you can extinguish fires forever. They just need to be refilled. It's kind of like a miniature scuba diving tank. And it can save both your car, yourself, and anybody on the street who's in trouble. It's worthwhile keeping one of these in your vehicle. Now let's say you got an old car, the tires are starting to get worn out and you think, oh, I'll try one of those retread tires. They're a lot cheaper and it's an old car, I don't care. Uh, big mistake, believe me. 
don't do it. Unless you own an 18 wheeler. The big trucks have tires that have many, many plies. They can be rebuilt over and over again. And people have been doing it for over 100 years. But car tires, one, they have less plies, and it's not a procedure, at least here in the United States, that's done all that much. The quality of them is I've had some customers try to save money that way, bit them in the rear end. Stupid things kept coming apart, like you see on the road. The casings of some of the big trucks where they came off, they get flat. It's not worth it on a car. Like on this Honda here, you can see a bunch of cracks are forming. Because the tire's flat and just wearing out. You see cracks, you don't buy the tire. But take these used tires on my Matrix. They've been on here like eight years, look. They're not cracked, they'd be perfectly good tires, even though they're old. They're not crack or rotten or anything. There's a little scuffing from hitting the side of the curb every once in a while, but you could buy a good use set like this cheap. If you don't mind traveling to a junkyard, at least if you live in the United States, don't put your life in the hands of retread car tires. It's not a process that's done that well in this country. It's not worth chancing your life on something like that. Now the last thing I want to talk about keeping your old clunker going as long as possible is gasoline. Most cars in the United States are made to run perfectly fine on regular gasoline. Even the modern high performance, they'll run fine on regular gas. And they'll say it has 246 horsepowers with regular gas, but 315 with high test. It'll run fine on the regular, won't have as much power, but it'll run perfectly fine. So you got an old clunker, odds are it was made to run on regular gasoline. But here is the kicker. As engines get old and wear, carbon often builds up inside the engine. The carbon takes up space. So the inside of the engine now has less space because the carbon took some of it up. That ups the compression. And I've seen it a zillion times, guys with old clunkers, and when they put high test gas in it, not only do they run better, but they get better gas mileage. Now, if you've got one of those old clunkers, you should carbon clean out the engine, but it might need engine work too. It could be really worn inside. Pay a little bit more for more expensive gas. If you like the way it runs and it gets better gas mileage, what the heck, you might break even on the price. Because yes, high test gas can make an old clunker run a little bit better if it's carboned up inside. So now you know some tips on how to keep your old clunker running as long as possible and not do any damage by doing some stupid thing that somebody told you to do who didn't know what they were talking about. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.